One of the perks of having a YouTube comment section is that occasionally you do get asked questions about your lessons and you kind of get an idea about what exactly people that need to know something about. So if you didn't explain something properly and you think to yourself, hmm, could I make a video out of this to actually answer this question once and for all? For example, a question like this one. So because I just finished a lesson on how to create a HTML form inside my HTML course, I thought why not make a video just kind of talking a bit about the required attribute that you can add inside a HTML form because it might not do exactly what you think it does. So what I have here is a very basic website that I created just for the sake of this exercise here. And as you can see, I have a very basic form at the bottom here that simply takes the user to formhandle.php using a post method. And it just kind of sends the data over from one input. So right in here, you can actually go inside the website just to demonstrate this. And as you can see, I have a very basic form where I can write in my name and I can submit the data and then I can do something with that data inside the page that I sent the data too. So what I basically did inside my form handler.php is I created a small bit of code just to do something with the data I sent to it. Now, if you come from my HTML course, don't worry too much about the PHP file. I just basically tried to make a point here so you don't need to know exactly what it does. All you need to know is that inside my form handler.php, I simply grab the data. And if you did not fill anything in, then I simply say you didn't fill in the form, shame on you. And if you did fill something in, then I simply write out your name is, and then the name that you actually included. So with this, if I go inside my website, you can see that I can write something. I can write my name here. And if I were to submit this data, you can now see that we get your name is Daniel. However, if I go back in here and actually submit it without putting anything inside the input, you can see that we now get you didn't fill in the form, shame on you. So the question I get is why do I do this? Why do I check for empty inputs when you can just go inside the HTML page, go down inside the form and include a required attribute? Because if you include this, then people can't submit the form, right? Now, even though this is going to prevent my user from actually submitting the form, and I can actually demonstrate this, you might not know what exactly it does. If I were to go back inside my website and now try to submit the form, I'm going to get this because I did not fill out the form, right? So we can't click this button and it's not going to submit it. However, for people who know a little bit about the developer tool inside the browser, you may know that you can actually go inside your website and you can change any kind of front end when it comes to your website. So any sort of HTML, CSS, even JavaScript can be changed using the developer tool, which means that I can go in, I can right click on my form, go down to inspect, go inside my developer tool over here, and I can zoom in just so you can actually see what is going on here. And in here, you can actually see that we have my input right here. If I were to actually go in and delete my input inside the DOM here, I can go ahead and go back inside my website, close this down, and I can actually submit the data. But we're not supposed to, right? And this is why it's important that even though you did include the required attribute that you still go in using a backend language and actually do something to check for these empty inputs because using front end is not going to do anything if the person that is using a website knows just a little bit about how browsers work. So it's very important that you do not use your browser for checking for these inputs here, but you use your server. And I just want to point out here that it is very important to point out that even though this might seem obvious to some people who do actually know a little bit about PHP or Python or something, if you're still learning HTML and CSS and you have not yet actually dove into you know, any sort of backend language, then I can definitely see how you might think that required is going to be enough to actually make sure that a user is going to fill in all the empty fields. And it's just very important to point out that required is more of a visualizer to show that, okay, so you're supposed to fill in the forms, but it's not gonna do anything in terms of security or checking for things. It is only meant as a visualizer because it is part of front end, which means we can change it. So with that said, I hope this video just kind of addresses the questions that people have when it comes to why I do actually check for empty inputs using my PSP code and not just use the required attribute. So with that said, I hope you all enjoyed and I'll see you guys in the next video. 